Hey, this is Sergio. Uh, thanks for checking in on this episode. We will be talking about engine wiring and chassis wiring for my Mini and what I had to do for rewiring the whole car. So this topic, I've been getting asked quite a bit about what I did, what I had to do, and exactly what it entails to rewire this whole car for the VTEC setup. Now, I can go into very, very specific details, but again, if I do that, I feel like it's gonna be not, not a waste of time, but definitely gonna be very, very specific to exactly what I have, and not everyone has exactly what we have here. I mean. Every build is different, even in the exact similar setup, someone's gonna have something different depending on the chassis of your car, whether you wanna rewire just the engine or do the whole from front to back kind of wiring. Uh, once you go into this build, uh, you have to kind of break it up into two different parts and that's what I'll be breaking apart. It'll be the engine wiring and then the chassis wiring. So those two components do intermingle at some point because obviously the chassis does have components that go into the engine bay in the sense of like your alternator, obviously your main power from the starter, that's where we pull the 12 volt source from the starter, uh, but then also a few items like the fan, uh, fan relay, things like that, that the chassis wiring could possibly have. And then the big one is the speedometer. And the odometer, those kinds of things, all the components that you need to read from your engine that get displayed onto your dashboard. So they do intermingle, but they are basically two different kinds of setups. So let me start with the engine side of it. Um, so with the engine, uh, with the B20 VTEC here that we have, it, the engine is done is ran off of a rye wire uh, tucked harness. And this is what came with the kit for Minitech. Uh, it's a tucked harness from rye wire, like I mentioned, but overall, I think it's a phenomenal setup and I recommend it to anyone, absolutely 100%. Rye wire uh, not only makes, uh, very, very good components, very high quality uh, setups. Uh, it's just clean. It's so, so clean. It's because it is a tuck setup. Everything just has just enough uh, slack to be able to go up and get plugged in and unplugged and whatnot, but it's also very hidden. So the wire harness itself is very minimal. Minimalistic is always very key for these kinds of very uh, tight uh, quarter setups. And it's very well integrated as well. The Setups that you can get from Wirewire are, I mean, you can basically build whatever you want. So OBD1, OBD2, whether you have a B16, B20, I mean, the whole nine, depending on your ECU, they'll be able to build for you. Mine is an OBD1, so it's obviously hooked up to a P20, well, not obviously, it's hooked up to a P28 ECU, so it's all built for that. Um, with that, so NOx sensor, um, O2 sensors, uh, the injectors, all the other, sensors, IACV, IATs, MAPS, the whole nine, all those acronyms, it has it all. You could just take the stock harness from the engine, obviously that it worked for it, it was designed for it, uh, so you can do that definitely. The output is what's gonna be, I think, a little bit more tricky with that if you wanna incorporate a different dash or if you're not gonna try to retrofit somehow the stock uh, SI or Honda dashboard into your Mini. For me, uh, as you'll see in the car with some of these video shots here, it, I went with new vintage USA gauges. So with that, it has a lot of just open outputs from the pigtail connectors onto the two gauges. Those two gauges have six gauges total. Uh, so everything was being fed into those. I just wanted to have a very clean and simple setup. Um, shout out to the Stevenson Motorco guys, because obviously, as you can clearly tell, I ripped that off because I really like that setup on their Humvee Tech Mini. There was no other design that I was, I was able to come up with that matched that cleanliness of that. So, uh, but yeah, those gauges do feed off of that engine harness. The Rye Wire kit does have a pigtail that goes in and has, I forget if it's like 10 or 12 different outputs. And from there, obviously they're all very well labeled, color coded, whatnot, with detailed instructions that you were able to put into those gauges. So it makes that integration very seamless and very clean. Um, that's, those are the big reasons why I think the Rye Wire Harness is so efficient for me um, and I, why I absolutely love it. I would recommend it to anyone. Um, with any of these things that I'm talking about here, these are not, this is, this is the only way you can do it. This is, the, this is the right way to do it. This is just the way that I did it. And based off of my research and um, pulling parts together, it made sense for me and I really liked it. 
so that's the engine side of it. Now the chassis side, this is where it's a little bit more difficult in my opinion. There's a lot There's a lot of different ways that you can do it. I would honestly do it differently now, but that's only because I've spent so many hours doing wiring, doing all this after this car. I came into this not having rewired it, anything basically, well, house stuff and things like that. I know electricity, I know the theory of it as an engineer, but never actually done any physically rewiring of a full car. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that I kept everything just as simple and as uh, clean as possible to start. Uh, now I would have probably built my own setup, a new fuse boxes, new relays, done everything myself, ran every single individual wire. Um, that's just more to clean up the inside as you'll see some of the shots before I put the dash and hide everything up together. Uh, within that setup there. I would have done it differently, but as someone that came into it not doing anything wiring wise, the setup that I did, I'm still very, very happy with. And I highly recommend it to anyone that's trying to get into this for the first time and doesn't have a lot of experience like I did. The setup that I got was a Speedway uh, 12 circuit um, wiring kit, if you will. So it comes with a fuse box, as you'll see in this photo, it comes with a fuse box, it comes with Bunch of other little components, I mean, zip ties, butt connectors, things like that. Um, and obviously very detailed instructions as well as to what it goes to what. And again, as the description sounds, it has 12 circuits. So you can do 12 circuits worth of items and components, but it's properly uh, gauge wire, proper fuses. And it is a very, very clean starting slate for your mini. It's uh, the only cables or wires, excuse me, that it doesn't have long enough, at least for my setup, where I placed the fuse box and whatnot, was to reach to the rear of the car. Um, so everything else though, I mean, the mini is so small. I mean, you had excess, I had a pile of excess wire afterwards um, when I had to cut everything to, to size and to length. So um, it has plenty of room, plenty of space for what you need. Um, but let me, uh, let me show you exactly what I had to do first of all before I integrated everything with a new uh, wiring kit. The biggest thing to incorporate with the chassis wiring and the engine wiring and figuring all that out was research. I feel like I'm saying that on every single one of my videos that it's research and research, but honestly for me, being able to pull this off myself, my skill sets and my experience building cars, uh, to this degree is very minimal so research was my friend asking questions looking into the internet looking into the internet again and then going back in the internet and searching again uh, it's very very instrumental and very very key with this and this was no different so prints and pulling prints is your friend for checking out your wire harness uh, this looks very daunting even though this is unfortunately a very simple wiring harness because minis are very simply have very basic setups. This looks a little bit intimidating at first, especially if you haven't done that. I know I, it felt intimidating for myself, so if it does for you, don't feel like you're not knowledgeable. Trust me, everyone starts uh, has to start somewhere, and that's what I did, so pulling these prints was key. I use Classic Mini DIY. I'll put a link in the description for this. Um, thank you guys for putting that up there because I was able to start looking through that to print these out on 11 by 17 sheets like these in order to start really deciphering it and starting picking it apart, tracing it much more easily than my Haynes manual. The Haynes manual for the Mini does have these wiring diagrams as well. It's, the only difference is that the, uh, it's obviously on paper, a little bit more difficult to read since it's smaller. And with this, I'm able to take it anywhere. Well, you can take the book anywhere too, but start drawing on it, start really tracing it and really understanding really what goes where within the chassis of the Mini. Each mini is different, as you can see when you search in that list that I'll put the description uh, link in below, is there's so many different minis as well. Uh, even though they're all basically the same, uh, the gauges that they use, the turnstock, the barrels, some bar ignition barrels have three, some have four cable wires coming out of them. So each of them are different. This is a Canadian mini, so even that one has a slightly different uh, wiring setup because they had a few other different safety components and things like that. So. The reason I'm talking about all this so much is because first, depending on what level you want to integrate, depending, that'll change from car to car and build to build, uh, you'll need to know what wires you're going to be using. If Unless you're going to be using a completely different turnstock, a completely different ignition barrel, none of the cables in the inside of the car are going to be the same. Um, 
that's the only time where really this won't really help you that much. But because I wanted to keep the turnstock signal and my ignition barrel, I wanted to know what inputs and outputs come out of that because it's a little bit more complicated than you may think of how they integrate that, the, um, the high beam light uh, uh, switch and whatnot. It's all very different. This was key to do that. The reason I had to look for this was that I had to label all those cables that were coming off of that in order to integrate with my 12 uh, circuit uh, wiring kit from Speedway. Once I studied this, researched this, looked at it again, and then read, read it again some more, I, got, I took just simple little labels, put what it was for, put it around the wire. So then once everything was perfectly wired of in the components that was left in the mini, once I put in my 12 circuit kit, I was then able to seamlessly be able to integrate within that system and then add whatever I needed to, take out whatever I needed to. And the end product was a car that uses the stock turn uh, turnstock and then stock ignition barrel. So makes it pretty nice because again, I wanna keep this build for me was to, to keep it as mini as possible in the sense of the aesthetics on the outside, the engine bay, keeping it as clean and minimalistic. And then on the inside of the car as well, keeping it very, very, very bare bones and very simple. Um, as, as simple as I can have it basically. Within the car itself, the main switches is gonna be four toggle switches that are double pole, um, single throw. So double pole just simply means it has two power inputs and two outputs, uh, not integrated within one another so they can be separated, but just one throw, so one position uh, for those switches. I had my running lights on one of them, my headlights on another one, uh, hazards on the third one and then the wipers on the fourth so that's what the four different toggle switches are very basic very simple uh, it made the wiring also very simple as well so within that setup it was easy to integrate into those switches um, on those toggle switches I will say this uh, there was no wiring diagram or no nothing that I had to follow from there I did kind of have to make my own and you will probably too all that is simply is, okay, start tracing, okay, well, this goes in here, so it's my power to the headlights, and the 12 uh, circuit kit literally has a wire that says headlight power. Again, it makes it very simple, which is kind of nice. So that goes in, and then the output goes out to the headlights, um, or the daytime running lights, it also has that cable. So again, it just made it very simple to kind of pick and choose where I was gonna go from, and where I was gonna go to from those outputs. Highly recommend that kit. I, uh, again, that will be in the description for sure, but the reason I'd recommend that kit so much is because of the ease of simplicity to whatever your setup is. So that was a very high level general overview. I, I wish I could go into a little bit more detail of exactly what I did and exactly what pin, I went to what pin, um, as some of the requests were from Instagram or Facebook uh, for this video, but the more I thought about it, the more I tried to plan this video out, it just didn't make sense. It didn't, it wasn't gonna be a very instructive video as far as general guidance on how to move forward with that kind of a project. Um, so instead, I went over it the way I did just to kind of be, keep it very high level, but still directional. And this is what I would recommend as a first time we're going into wiring um, and what I had to do. Um, I've mentioned it a few times already, but if you do have specific questions, Feel free to comment below, uh, message me on, this, uh, on Instagram at John the Mini. Um, I wanna leave you with just a couple of items that I do highly recommend with this. Uh, one is the tools. Make sure you get yourself some good uh, wire strippers and good wire crimpers. You don't have to go expensive and crazy uh, high dollar priced items, but get some that are reliable. Irwin has some good wire strippers that are those spring loaded mechanical release ones. I can't tell you how much time that, and frustration those things have saved me by just being able to any kind of wire length, just strip and then you're done. Uh, and then the wire crimpers as well, go to, go to Amazon. There's quite a few on there in my opinion that are very good and very affordable, uh, like 60, 70 bucks. Don't cheap out on that, on um, those tools. Also, uh, the biggest thing that I had to tell myself and I got advice from a neighbor who built a just gorgeous a Dodge, old Dodge Dart himself. Uh, the biggest thing that he gave me advice on was just remember, just take it one wire at a time. You can only work on one wire at a time, so just break it down to that. Um, as you're going through the front of the car, the dashboard of the car, the, the center of the car, and then the rear of the car in each section, take it one wire at a time. You gotta remind yourself that or else 
you're gonna drive yourself insane. And that's what I was doing myself. I was trying to piece all of the wine together all at once and understanding all understanding it all as one component. But that was very futile because again, that's not how it works. It would all works one wire at a time. Um, it just works obviously all at the same time when you're running the car. But as you're running it one wire at a time, remember just one, not two, not three, just one. And that'll help break down the process a lot more to make it more manageable, more understandable, and a lot more doable in your head. And you'll have a lot more confidence that way as well. So one wire at a time. If you don't have a lot of experience doing wiring, that 12 circuit kit is perfect. It's all perfectly labeled. Get your prints together, study it, look at it, and do a lot of cross-referencing. And feel free to message me with all those things. I know you can do it as well. If I can do it, trust me, you can as well with all those items. And I'm hoping that this video will help you uh, avoid some frustration like I did uh, with uh, understanding now all of this. So uh, comment below, feel free to message me, uh, message me any questions you may have. And uh, best of luck and remember, one wire at a time, you got this.